Hello, welcome back. And this is still the press on Captain Television. And right now, I'm being joined by Richard O'Reilly, who is a public affairs analyst. Good morning. I'm glad to have you join me in the studio this morning. It's my pleasure, Asuja. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. It's so yeah. Yeah, but I'm <laughs> 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 Haven't seen. I haven't been with you on air in a while, so I kind of really missed those analysts you usually give to us. But let's kick start because our time is fast spent. I'm talking. Uh, we have the headline here on Vanguard that says takes in panic over more over NLC's December first strike notice over the minimum wage. You know, they still. I've always said it, and I I, I think it was really I said on the show that uh, in this country is not about about making law, 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 law is about implementations. So uh, there is this uh, notice that uh, it has come to a notice that some states have not been paying or haven't even started paying the minimum, uh, the approved minimum wage. And now, so why some are paying, some aren't paying? So what do you make out of all of this? Why do you think some states have refused to pay despite the uh, you know economic situation we found ourselves in? The the general issue there is uh, political will, lack of political will, that is going on in the, the entire political system in Nigeria. So what do you mean by lack of political will? Lack of political will in the sense that our politicians, our leaders, mostly majority of them, they don't have the political will power to doing something to solving human problems, mm. and leadership uh, entails uh, problem solving. Okay. If you are in leadership position, why you are there? is to solve problems mm -hmm. and now this thing this uh, minimum wage issue has become uh, a law in mm -hmm. nigeria mm -hmm. and the 36 states of, uh, uh, the of of the federation what the uh, after is to come to abuja to take uh, allocation. allocation and but the willingness to do things at the state level mm. even trickling it down to the local government level mm. so that the central government will be less burdened mm. they don't have that uh, way power to to do it and they are like a, i can call it in international relation we call it a, a, a free riders mm. they are in the union but they want to be taken are not contributing anything to the development of the country mm. is, 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 is sad. It's sad. Like other governors that have uh, indicated interest to pay, mm. and they have even made pronouncements. Some states uh, are willing to pay 70, some mm. 75, 80. some even 72, some 80. Mm. You understand? Even if you don't have the resources enough, mm. like other states, there's no how you will say you don't have the resources enough. Because if you calculate, no state in the Federation today collect less than 5 billion naira allocation. Mm. And what is the salary strength of every state in Nigeria? Mm. Let me take example from Benue State. Okay. Well, we, we are civil service state and uh, agric, agric, agriculture. Mm. If you check the salary strength of uh, Benue State workers, it's not up to even uh, 2 billion. Mm. So why will states be saying that they don't have the resources enough to pay workers? And these workers, they are the engine house of every every government. Mm. Without them, no government will run effectively. Mm. And if you don't want your government to run well, then that is where you will not take the the welfare of your workers so mm. serious. Mm. So any state that is that is facing this lack of uh, cap uh, capacity, lack of uh, 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 political will to pay this uh, minimum wage, mm. then we should take them as some serious states, uh, serious mm. governors. Mm. And such people should be voted out if they are still governors that will want to come back again. Mm. We don't want such thing to happen. Every person in Nigeria, we are shifting blame to federal government. So federal government. government. I was going to come to that because I was... Which is not fair. Mm. Which is not right. It's not right at all. If the local government, they are doing things that they are supposed to be doing at the local level. Mm. If the state government, they are doing things that they are supposed to be doing at the state level. Mm. There is no how the body will be so much on federal government. Mm. And uh, federal government to have a percentage from mm. the federation allocation. Mm. State government have their own. Local government have their own. Mm. And the state government with their greed, they are even taking the one belonging to this local government to their own, mm. calling it joint account, mm. which is criminal. <laughs> so, so they should, they should, just, they should just go ahead and pay. And any state that refuse to pay, the workers should even take the governor, the government to court. Mm. All right. They have uh, union. All right, viewers, at this point, our phone lines are now open for you to call in to join the conversation. You know, I was going to ask you, say, now, in, in, you talked about lack of political view. And yes. uh, looking at uh, the political system in Nigeria now, uh, we, we tend to, okay, look at it. Uh, the federal government has done its part by approving the 
minimum wage. But now it's not a problem to the state governors or state to governments implement. to implement. Now try to balance our political system. Do, who do you think we should blame? You know, who push blames to? Do we, do we blame the the state governments for uh, for poor political system or the federal government? Well, you can't blame the the federal government for pop the the system. If there is any any discrepancies, if there is any problem within this, you blame all the political leaders mm. because all of them, both the state government, local government, federal government, they are all operating under the federal law. Mm. And this uh, minimum wage mm. is a federal law. It's not a state law. It's not a local government law. It's a state, a, a federal law that everyone it binds everyone. Mm. And that is why I said any state that is not willing to pay, the workers in that state should have that strength, that strength to ventilate their grievances in court. They have union. Mm. State government, yeah, they can be, they can sue and be sued. Mm. If the question is with local government, they should sue the state government, any state government that refused to pay the minimum wage. They should sue that government mm. for damages and for every pain that they have caused them. Mm. Simple. Okay. So, uh, are you in support of the NLC uh, ultimatum first December strike? Should any of the state or state government refuses to pay it uh, or implement the minimum wage? Are you are you in support with the, of the NLC's decision? That is the only window they have to to ventilate their grievances. Mm. That's the only window they have. But, but, but another question is: Will it, will it even solve the problem? Will it, it make any it difference? It has never solved their problem before. Mm. It has never solved their problem before. But uh, in, if you want to be diplomatic, if you don't want crisis, if you don't want problem, mm. meaning they have a passion to serve their states okay they have that willingness to mm. serve their state mm. and that is why they are not talking of uh, any other taking other measures mm. that would be dr so drastic in nature to the state and that's why they are taking this window of a uh, strike to ventilating their grievances mm. to the state but i will tell them to have that strength to sue in the state because the fear there is that most of them, most of them from the lo local level who mm. work at the state uh, level, mm. the the fear is that you that will bring yourself out to challenging the state government, mm. you will be saying that your job will be at stake. Mm. And if you have that power to say, let me do it on behalf of others, many who will even be in the meeting with you, in the agreement with you, at the end they will they will they will they will desert you, mm. and you will just become a lump a lump danger in the fight. Mm. If not, the, the union should come together. They have legal legal department in their union. They should come together and hire a very good a lawyer mm. to sue the, any state that is refusing, is refusing to implement the, the, the minimum wage. Mm -hmm. Yes, but the, the strike issue is the only window that they can use to ventilate their grievances now in order to bring uh, such a state government mm. to the table for dialogue. Mm. All right, thank you very there much. There should be no need for even dialogue now. <laughs> All right, straight implementation. Hi, hello, good morning. Glad to have you join us on the morning show. Your name and where you're calling us from. Good morning, my name is Samson, calling from Abuja. Samson from Abuja, please go ahead with your Okay, so talking about uh, the issue of uh, the minimum wage, uh -huh. I think the first question the mm. media should ask. Has even the federal government started paying? Okay. Because, because the best of my knowledge, is what even started the payment. I think um, the most before, they included, they included I think, 40,000 naira cross board. Last month, it was 30,000 naira cross board. So even federal government has not even started the payment. So mm. if federal government has made this law, has not started the implementation, so why are we cru crucifying the state mm. for not starting? So I think the um, first of all, the issue should start from federal government themselves. Mm. They are supposed to lead by example. It's when they, when they are able to implement it completely, mm. then the state would, that's when we we'll start at, at least attacking the state. Mm. Because I think it should start from federal government since they are the one that made the law. That's my point. Thank you so all much. Right, thank you very much, Samson, for your contribution. Federal uh, in this case, Federal government in this case started implementation since July. Uh, so if yeah. you don't receive your own, you need to be paid as a rear. Exactly. So 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 there's nothing like a federal government or All right, before we move to started implementation. Before we move to on the state, let's begin here what the scholar have got to say. Hello, good morning. 
Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Glad to have you join us. How Your name and where you're calling us from? Yeah. I'm a man of my business. You what? Our brother made a very good statement that the next day that he did say he should take it to court. Okay. Apart from Harry. This is a strike concerning uh, anything concerning strike and MSC. Mm. When you see the strike, many mm. youth mm. should have attended to be so many things. For me, as our brother said, he said he should go to court. Mm. Let us go to court to for them we now know what the judiciary in Nigeria are doing. <laughs> All right. Thank you. If you go to court, I mean, go to strike for mm. me, I don't. Because go to strike, many, many things will happen. Okay. Like me now, I'm a person. Mm. Now you still there. Okay. All right, thank you very much for your contribution and the applied no theft. Have yourself a wonderful day. You know, uh, he said that you, you made a valid point. They should go to court. The other question is the the judiciary system of government. What has it become to be? Is there uh, what is their fate going to court? But I, I want us to talk about this Ondo state election. In less than seventy two hours, the people of Ondo will get to decide who they want to be governed by. And uh, we've seen what played out in recent uh, elections, like that of the Edo, your state, Benue state, and the rest of it. What is your expectation? From this coming election in those states my expectation is uh, like your own what is my expectation <laughs> 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 but uh, the notion the notion for undo mm. undo undo state has uh, that is the state where i served as a copper mm. that was in 2009 mm. i finished service on the 11th of january 2010 mm -hmm. and uh, i see undo, undo to be a state that is very civil okay uh, highly civil mm. and uh, if you look at the campaign so far mm. that they have been running you will see civility mm. in their approach to democratic uh, engagement both sides both sides both pdp and apc mm. we've not seen any record of uh, violence for okay. many of the parties mm. political parties we've not seen any sign sign, sign of uh, attacking each other mm. no no in fact they have been so civil in their mode of uh, oppression okay. so for that reason i am seeing environment that will be so conducive. so conducive and free for mm. electorate mm -hmm. to go all out mm. and select who they want to govern them mm -hmm. uh, on the other hand of it side of it again nigerians will be asking whether i neck exactly. because now the people have coordinated themselves mm. and that they have coordinated themselves positioned themselves in a way and manner that they are ready and willing to choose their leader mm. will a standard force come in to influencing anything mm -hmm. against their wish okay that is the area we should be looking at mm. now external forces they are there mm. in every election the external forces, they, I can say they are the ones who are causing crisis in most communities. Mm. Because for the communities, they know how to manage themselves. But when forces from outside comes in, that is where you see the system mm. having a kind of, some kind of a, a confusion. Mm. So we, I will plead that uh, external forces should stay clear from Undo. They should allow them. They are highly educated. If you talk of a cultural, a cultural mood, mm. in those states, they mm. respect culture, mm. they respect elders, mm. they respect uh, 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 civil obedience. Mm. So, so I, 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 I am seeing that election in Undo mm. will be quite different from every other part of Nigeria that they have conducted election this year so far. Mm -hmm. This yes, is I'm perceiving that. You are perceiving oh, yeah, I, I, We're just going to sit back, uh, keep our fingers crossed, and see what plays out. But then let's talk about the INEC. How, how, how prepared do you think INEC is to conduct this election? INEC should uh, do you see Do you see uh, INEC displaying credibility in this Ondo state election? These staggered elections they have been conducting so far, mm. INEC have no reason to complain of a uh, one. Uh, lack of staff 
because like Kondo now is just one state out of 36. Mm. So they, sh they can mobilize all their staff from every part of the country to go to those states. Mm. In a single state election like this, mm. me, what I, I am expecting from INEC is to see how even fully unit uh, uh, presiding officers should be all INEC staff, not the use of core members. Okay. Yes. Like in Ondo now, it's, a, it's one single state. Mm. So conducting election using complete staff of INEC mm. will have more credibility mm. than using ad hoc staff who are not staff of the commission. Mm. So if INEC can make use of their staff mm. to go to Ondo and conduct the election from polling unit to local government coalition mm. officers and even to state uh, government state uh, coalition center mm. they should use their staff or oh, calculating the number of a uh, poly uh, poly unit in a uh, 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 those state mm. i don't think the total number of only units in the those state would be more than the uh, INEC staff mm -hmm. it would not be more than mm. because right now they are not doing anything in all the states where they are mm. the federal INEC officers they are not doing anything mm. for that reason they can't deploy them mm. to a particular state like this and make use of all of them because the people who who are abusing the electoral process in this country, I can say it clear, they are the alcohol staff. Okay. They have nothing to lose. The only thing they go in for is what they gain. Mm. They are going there to trade, and they are the one abusing the process. Right. So okay. as the staff mm. of INEC, you will have it in mind that if you are caught doing any wrong thing, mm. because when you are given the employment. You sign code, you have your code of conduct, and if you go against that code of conduct in abusing what you are assigned to do, mm. you will be punished for it. But as an ad hoc staff, once you do it, you collect your money, your own, you are gone. Nobody see you again, nobody know you said the only thing you'll be waiting is when you receive the alert from my neck that they have paid you. That's all. They have nothing with you. They don't even have their details. The only detail they have, because I've been part of a, a, a training of our host staff in my local government before. Mm. They'll bring students from different universities, they'll come to train them in the primary school. After that, politicians will even come to select who will do the work. For them, politicians will sponsor those that will even be selected as our host staff. Mm. And they're selecting people that will work for them. That is the wrong process that I see that I make has been doing all this why mm. and that is why we have been having issues with election credibility in our electoral system mm. so if i can use Odo as example mm. and show their strength by using their staff straight to go and conduct the election in Odo, mm. nigerians will be very happy because we want a situation where the people will truly choose who lead them mm. That is my point. But, but we've seen cases where the result on the IRF is quite different from the results that was gathered from uh, uh, polling centers and units. Uh, do you, uh, uh, do, that should the ad hoc to be blamed for that? The discrepancies come from polling unit. The IRF is a system, a machine that is there. Where they are having the problem mm. is from polling unit. Because at every polling unit, mm. I may provide for you, the presiding officer, mm. two registers. One is electronic, which is the beavers. Mm -hmm. So no, one the second one, one is one more register. One, ca one ca can't the two correspond. It can correspond because one, when they want to rig, they will abandon the uh, electronic register, mm -hmm. which is uh, the beavers. Accurate, okay, which, which is, is the beavers. Mm -hmm. Yes. They will abandon that and use the man manual register. Mm -hmm. The two registers, they, they are there for the election. Mm. Once they revert to manual register, mm. that is where you will see the number of vote, vote cast mm. higher in the IRF mm. than the real voters that have been registered in the electronic register. Mm. The electronic register is the beavers. Mm -hmm. The manual register is there too. So an INEC make use of the two. Anywhere they want to rig, they make use of manual register. Mm. 
They will register in the manner this thing and give you ballot paper to go and cast your votes. At the end, they will write the report that the beavers could not uh, 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 capture your, your fingerprint or something like that. Mm. And they will do it. And, they let, and, the, and the, the law accept it. Mm. That is the problem. All right. So, so anywhere they really want to rig, mm. they use manual register. Mm, indeed. So, yes. we'll come to how to prevent that, whether we should eradicate the manual register entirely. Good morning. Morning. Glad to have you join us on the show. Your name and where you're calling us from? Raimi uh, from Abuja. I barely hear you. Please, can you speak up? Raimi from Abuja. Okay, please, I'll go ahead with your contribution. Mm. Until the world is not existing again, mm. we can still redeem ourselves. Okay. Yes. You can see how our government continues rewarding evil. Mm. There are many allegations against Oluomo. Mm. And now Oluomo is the president of NURTW nationwide. Mm. Okay. Yeah, but I will have to I will have to call your attention to the your, your choice of words. You know this is a national television, so please be mindful with your words and be polite. What are those words? Can you remind me, please? You say so called It's also called developer. Madman. Well, uh, Mr. Mr. I would have to let you go. And uh, when you choose to be polite uh, with your words, you can call that. Let me also remind you viewers that when you call into the line, please try to be as polite as you can. This is a national TV, so be mindful of the words you use on air. Thank you very much, and let's uh, continue the program. Uh, then I talked about. Uh, Okay, there is this uh, report that uh, came from the federal government that the policies of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu is beginning to yield fruit that our time of suffering is over. <laughs> and as of today, I woke up to dollar one thousand nine hundred, one thousand nine hundred per dollar, and I'm kind of wondering, well, how, how, where's that? Are you feeling anything? Maybe I'm the only one who isn't feeling the, the, the you know, the, the, the these things. Are you feeling the the, the 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 fruit of these policies that are already taken or that are being taken? Mm, I I am not a staff of uh, federal government mm. and I am not. No, as an Nigerian, well, I think he said uh, the federal government said Nigerians. Uh, the, okay, President Bolasunbu said the suffering of Nigerians are now over. Now it's time for enjoyment. So <laughs> where are we headed today? Until you see the enjoyment, for me, I have not seen it. You've not seen right it from my home. Okay. I have not seen personally. Until we begin to see, mm. but every policy of government that is harsh, mm. 
sometimes take time to, to manifest to yeah. fruit. So okay. maybe he's uh, foreseeing that fruit mm. coming. But mm. uh, we have not seen mm. what he will see. Okay. Yeah. So someone I was I was reading through this head headline and someone I heard some Nigerian say uh political system like uh, the, the the political government are being the government is now becoming a family affair because this head headline read a couple of fakes over in and or edo Oshimale's son makes cabinet. So it's not like, and we saw how we saw how far Oshimale, you know, campaigned for uh, Senator Mondo Koblo, that's the executive governor now. And it's not being, so well, someone will wonder, is this now becoming like a family affair business or something? Are you just knowing? <laughs> I'm asking you, maybe I don't know. Uh, no, what is there is that if you look at the entire population, mm. just one percent of uh, the population of the country mm. controls both the economy and the political system one okay. percent mm. the remaining other percent mm. the 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 uh they are the ones uh, but why should it be a one, 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 why should it be a family affair business it's mm -hmm. not just a show of a family affair politics in nigeria mm. is business it's business politics in nigeria is business mm -hmm. and that is why you can see people someone say lucrative business you mm -hmm. can see people sell everything they have to fund the election power. to mm -hmm. fund the election mm -hmm. i can sell my properties to fund the election as my candidate mm -hmm. and when you get in there the first thing i do is to see how i surround you mm -hmm. with people that will bring the same that will, be loyal to to me. Me. that will bring the whole thing the resources to me mm -hmm. then little will be given to the poor masses mm -hmm. so that is why we are not seeing development Okay. Like what has happened in Edo State now, from mm. the three major key positions mm. announced by the governor so far, mm. the attorney, ge the attorney general of the federation of the state now is a former House of Rep member. Mm. Uh, this uh, person, uh, what is that his name? Uh, Osage mm. is the attorney general of the state now. Mm. He has a close affiliation, political affiliation with uh, uh, Odanso Shomole, okay. the secretary to the state government. Mm. Uh, a lawyer who graduated from uh, 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 A.B. Uzaria mm. uh, uh, A.B. Uzaria in 2008 that is uh, uh, Musa Ikilo mm. he is the st state uh, scribe now he is the chief scribe of uh, those states now okay. why and he from A.B. AB Medibola University mm. Zaria mm. you know Shonole grew up in Kaduna mm. can you how will you relate that the guy graduated from maybe Uzaria and Oshomole grew up in Kaduna State. Mm. So he is Oshomole's boy. boy. Yes. Now the son, who mm. is a Siri mm. Oshomole, mm. is the state commissioner for head presently. Mm. So so far, you should know that Oshomole in the top ten. Mm. In a do state. Oshomole is uh, is 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 in his top ten in a do state. Mm. But the governor should know that the vote mm. that of the people were given to him. Any uh, responsibility, the vote of the people were given to him. Given mm. to him. That's why he's governor today. Okay, okay, Edo okay. People voted for him. Okay, okay. To be governor. Mm -hmm. And if he should allow any uh, person to influence his decisions okay. against the wishes of the people, of the people, he will be the one to face the blame. Mm. And he should be ready to take that responsibility. Okay. So for that reason, in any of his diplomatic engagement mm. with his godfather, mm. he should first of all place the interests of Edo people far above his own and his godfather's interests. But is that possible at all? Is, the, is it ever it's possible? possible when you have it's possible when you have people who know what leadership is all about. So are you, are you it's possible you, when you have people who have the intellectual rigor. To face challenges of governance. What you're trying, what you're, what you're saying now is, not, is, is when I when I look at what you're saying, now, it, it gives me picture of what is happening in river states. Don't you think uh, what well, that is uh, what you're trying to suggest now? And and I ask, is it possible? You said it's possible. It's of possible, course, it's, it's quite possible. possible. But don't you think say if you have the 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 right education, the right education that is about society development, mm. but. Western education mm. and even African education mm. that is about society, community development. Mm. Every education you have acquired, mm. be it African type of education or 
Western type of education mm. is all about building society. Mm. It's all about the development of society, mm. making life meaningful mm. for people. Now, if you have such kind of education mm. and you are elected as governor, even if you have godfather, what you do is to use your wisdom, mm. to use your intellect to see how you and your God, so called godfather, who might be selfish, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, well, yes, who so might be selfish, mm. you use your own sense, so your own sense mm. to engage that your godfather mm. in a diplomatic way. Any person that is a diplomat, mm. you are engaging in an argument with whoever that is coming mm. to challenge your own interests. And you should always ensure that your interests. It's always met. Mm. If your interest is your target, then the people you are representing as governor mm. should always be your focal point. Their interest is what you'll be presenting to that your godfather. Mm. And that your godfather will see reasons with you to see why this thing you want to do is important. Mm. Then you can equally give him some leeway mm. where he can succeed mm. in his own selfish interest, but not total. Mm. That is why I say it's easy to manage godfathers in Nigeria. But we can achieve that when we have people with that intellectual rigor, mm. people with that sense of credibility, mm. that competence, that merit mm. to be leaders. But when we see uh, mediocres being appointed or elected as leaders, there is no how they can challenge even their godfather. Mm. That is why we are having problems with godfathers and godsons and goddaughters. <laughs> because God the godsons and goddaughters, God they, God 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 they don't have that, that uh, strength of mm. argument mm. with their superiors. Mm. And that is why they are falling apart. Mm. The best thing is to use violence. The best thing is to, use be, to betray outrightly. And at the end, they fail in the fight. Mm. So what you do, you use your, your sense, your diplomatic sense. Mm. To, 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 to work things out for yourself and for the people that you are representing. All right. Because everything about governance, especially democratic governance, is about individual responsibility. Okay. It's not about collective responsibility. Mm. Like, whatever happened in the time of uh, Buhari, President Muhammad Buhari, mm. Nigerians are referring to Buhari's regime. Mm. They are not referring to any of the ministers that serve under him. All right. They are not referring to them. They don't even know the names of the ministers. Now, don't you can't even mention the names of the ministers that are served under Buhari. Mm. It's only Buhari now that they know. Exactly. So every problem, every success is of that government. It's Buhari. Is Buhari. Is <laughs> All right, uh, Richard, uh, let's quickly hear from this caller before we call it a wrap. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Glad to have you join us. Your name and where you're calling us from. My name is Volume uh, Please turn down the volume of your TV set. Uh, so, my own, my own, yes, my own thing is that the person that I called last time, mm. yes, such people should not be allowed to be talking. Okay, how can you address your president the way a man like that? Okay. I think the president deserves some respect. Mm. Mm -hmm. So nobody is the best. Right. But you think your country to move forward. Rather than saying you need to keep talking. Right. So it's an it's an elderly man. Mm. Even if it's wrong, you need to talk to him politely. Mm. And you know what he's saying, look at me. Mm. So I think it's not. You should be such people should be addressed properly. Alright. Thank you very much for your contribution and have yourself a wonderful day. All right, I want us to touch, talk about this PMS because we can't, uh, as Nigerians, we can't, you know, navigate through economy, um, the growth of our economy and businesses without the use of PMS. And uh, this headline read, Dangote, Ipma members load petrol at 990 naira per liter. And you know, we since the crisis of this PMS, you've seen how the economy has, uh, you know, drastically gone down. Businesses are closed, and uh, you, 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 uh, life has been very difficult. And I want to get your opinion. Do you think? Do you think there is a possible solution to this PMS? Because this is one thing Nigerians cannot do without. When you talk about transportation of goods and services from one state to the other, you can talk about PMS. When you talk about other things, you talk about businesses. You talk about electricity. You talk about PMS. So now, and it has become. 
a, a like a tone on our flesh and uh, has brought about economic uh, econo uh, economic destroy. So do you think do you think Nigerians will ever this PMS? Do you think the issue will ever be resolved or really stabilize? If uh, these uh, people are loading at nine hundred and ninety naira per liter, uh, that is what uh, is before all of us now. I use car. Other people like you, you use. So, what is there is that that's where we are find ourselves, mm. and I am not seeing the possibility of the price coming down mm. anymore. Because even then, who are the capitalists in the business? Mm. What they are protecting is their own selfish interest not even the interest of you and i the poor masses okay they don't look at our own mm. what they look at is their game mm. and now uh Dangote has succeeded in monopolizing the system mm. government's hand is totally off now mm. even the supervisory role is uh, minimal as it is now mm -hmm. before Ipan, they were saying that uh, they are not going to be lifting solely from uh, Dango 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 refinery. Yes, that they can even look for other means of getting the fuel. If okay, they what are other means? If we already have the refinery, you know, have the refinery. instead of importing from what? No, if they, if they, if the marketers mm. have means of getting uh, uh, petrol from anywhere, mm. even outside Dango mm. this it should be allowed. And once it's done that way, the price will stagger. This person will be selling his own lower. This person will be selling his own. So you that is selling high, you must be forced to come down. Yeah, but I want to understand. The, the, uh, the, what's the possibility that importing importation will be lesser than that of that uh, dangote which we have in our country? They are both the same because even the dangote is importing crude to refine. It's mm -hmm. not having all the crude from Nigeria. Mm -hmm. U.S. is selling crude to even dangote. Mm -hmm. So since dangote is getting his crude outside. There is no how the price will equally come down, but allowing them to take a loan to be the only person that if will be lifting fuel petrol from, mm. he has put a benchmark of his own price, mm. and that benchmark is is, is almost one thousand. Mm. Since it's almost one thousand, nobody will go to that and lift a petrol at the rate of nine hundred or something, and you come to say to me for mm. seven hundred naira. Mm. Rather, they will say either one thousand three hundred mm. because lifting the petrol from there to Abuja to Kaduna. To my degree, mm. you will calculate, cal calculate the expenses mm. incurred on the road. Mm -hmm. You will feed. Yes. Uh -huh. You buy diesel to transport this thing. Mm. You, if you don't have the truck, you have to hire a truck. Mm -hmm. You calculate all of this and put everything to the consumers to to bear the bond. The, the bond mm. is the consumers that will bear every of your expenses on the road. Mm. So if Dangote has put that benchmark of the price that mm. he's selling to Ibman, mm. then. There's no high man will come down. Mm. They can't come down. But if you allow them to be going different ways and getting their fear, maybe the way you 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 are buying from Dangote, mm. the, 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 the 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 angle you take in getting to Dangote, mm. your price might be nine hundred or something. The other person going to maybe somewhere in another place to get his own fear, maybe the price he every expenses might be around 800 mm. or 700 mm. so that person's price will be lower mm. this person that is getting for 900 or something the whole there's no other the price will be lower mm. because you will equally add something to make profit mm. so now that dangote, dangote is the only person selling to them that benchmark has been placed okay and he can't come down so mm. we should even be expecting higher price of the, the PMS. Yes, we should be expecting higher price. Wow. Yes. Wow. It can't come down. My heart is shaking. Is we should be expecting higher price. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Richard Oye, for being with me in the studio this morning. It's been wonderful to have you around. Thank you so much for coming. It's my pleasure. And at this Always. point, uh, at this point, this is where we call it a wrap on today's morning show. Thank you so much for sticking around with us and keep watching Captain Television. I am Missy Emily. Enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>